The American West is scattered with ghost towns, places where history lingers in its dust. I live out of my old sunlight camper on the back of my Toyota Tundra, and I've set out to explore a few off the beaten path ghost towns in this video, hoping to find one that I can camp out in. Very interesting. These towns hold their share of history. What I found wasn't what I expected. Wow, I think we are in the middle of something. But the journey is always worth uncovering. Let's dive in. Wow. Hi, my name is Victoria Rose. Welcome to my channel and welcome to the Wild West, the canyon lands of Utah. It's absolutely gorgeous here. We're gonna take a nice hike, get the day started, but by tonight, we're gonna be staying in a ghost town. We're going to Cisco, Utah. It's an old railroad ghost town. I've never been there. I've never, I don't know if you can camp there, but we're gonna try it all out in today's video. So let's go. Our first ghost town stop is Cisco. Cisco, Utah was once a bustling railroad town serving as a refueling and water stop for steam engines in the late 1800s. Over time, it grew into a small hub for ranchers and oil workers, but the switch to diesel engines and the decline of local industries led to its abandonment. Today, Cisco is a crumbling ghost town scattered with graffiti-covered ruins, rusting vehicles, and a few modern residents clinging to its desolate charm. Bumpy footage. All right, we are approaching Cisco. There's a whole lot of nothingness right now. We're two minutes away, so I don't know what we're looking for. I think I can see it just over yonder. So this appears to be Cisco. Hey, prairie dog. What are you doing here? So this is interesting. It's a mixture of a lot of different things. Not really what I expected. It's interesting because I read that maybe some people do live here, but like, obviously they don't. That's really interesting. I thought this was gonna be a completely dead ghost town, but you can ask what's going on in this town. Why are these people parked here? I think we are in the middle of something that we shouldn't be. <laughs> what's going on here but I feel like this is we're interrupting something this is so random so I always come into situations where I don't really research too much beforehand I did try to research a little bit Cisco is a ghost town it has been abandoned but there has been hippies oh they're coming over here there's hippies that sometimes live here and I don't know what kind of hippies these are I don't know what's going on this looks like some sort of cult stuff <laughs> Like genuinely like apparently they're filming a movie i don't see any cameras at all i guess it's nothing to do with cisco it's just that's where they're doing something we literally like interrupted their making of a movie this is definitely the strangest ghost town i've ever been to to be honest like it's just very eerie <laughs> not what I expected for this video at all. We're gonna visit some more ghost towns in this video, but as for this one, we're gonna finish it up by camping here in Cisco. I'm not sure where to camp yet. And the sun's going down, so we need to figure this out. I think the main thing about exploring and adventuring overlanding is you don't know until you go. And that's kind of my motto. And we're here, now we know. We learned something new. But I think tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna venture on to some more ghost towns. If you'll stay with me. Cisco doesn't seem like the best option to camp out in, considering apparently there are a couple residents who might still live there, and one might have a gun. So we should continue on our hunt for a truly desolate ghost town. Our Cisco dream didn't exactly 
come to fruition. It's still a ghost town and it still does have a lot of history, just like all the other ghost towns in the West. I'm excited to visit some more, like in my previous videos, if you guys remember. This place is very interesting. I don't really know what all to say more about it. We're gonna go down the road and still camp in Cisco and see what tomorrow brings. for the night in Cisco, Utah, in our first ghost town. Let's get things set up and hopefully tonight will be a little bit warm and we'll get some good sleep. All cozied in, we're getting really fast at our setup. We have Starlink on, we're making some supper now. A little update on the leak that was coming out of the truck. We figured out just by stopping in at a garage and asking that it was hydraulic fluid or something just because it, the truck bent a little bit too much, but it's totally fine. So I'm very, very happy about that. I've spent so much to get this truck up to par. Unfortunately though, we still have not fixed our water pump, which we kept hoping would fix itself, but it hasn't, weirdly. Very odd. <laughs> so we're gonna have to figure that out because it's really, really hard to do dishes now. Good morning. So, pretty non-eventful night in the ghost town of Cisco, but no worries, we're going to the next ghost town, which isn't even that far from here. It's called Thompson Springs, it's in Thompson Springs. And then there's one right above that named Sego. So we're gonna check out these two ghost towns and maybe stay the night at one of them. We're making our way into Thompson Springs. Supposedly, this used to be a bustling town. Will we find an actual cool ghost town? So Thompson Springs, Utah used to be a vital railroad hub. It now teeters on the edge of abandonment. Founded in the late 1800s and named after a sawmill operator E.W. Thompson, the town thrived when the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad arrived in 1883. Today, with fewer than 40 residents, its crumbling homes and businesses along the frontage road echo the ghostly fate of nearby Sego. So apparently up here, there are petroglyphs. We're gonna stop in around the Sego area, visit the petroglyphs, Apparently there's a graveyard. I'm fingers crossed that we can get into this one and, you know, learn a little bit about Sego. So we're making a first stop here at the Petroglyphs. They could be hundreds or thousands of years old, probably from the Ute Native Americans, probably from the mid 1700s. These are dated from 400 through 1350. These people likely coexisted with the neighboring ancestral Puebloan peoples who occupied southern Utah and had distinctly different life ways and tools. Can't really see it very well, but Gay Whipple was the OG graffiti -er in 1884. <laughs> These other ones are probably much older than that. Hi, little bunny. Hey, bear. Hey. I don't know if you guys care for the history lesson or whatever. It's quite interesting because, you know, it's America's history. It's in the original Americans and it's pretty cool. But let's continue on to the ghost town of Sego. Sego, Utah began as a bustling coal mining town in the early 1900s, nestled in a canyon near the Book Cliffs. At its peak, it boasted a school, company store, and dozens of homes for miners and their families. However, labor disputes, water shortages, and declining coal demand led to its slow demise. Here is the first building we've seen of Sego. And the town was abandoned by the 1950s. Just like a hole in the ground. I don't know what this is. This might have been a diff another part of the building. Apparently there is a graveyard if we kind of hike to the top of this area over here. So we're gonna go look at the Sego Cemetery. So climbing up this hill to find the cemetery. Here it is. I guess we could have just driven. Sego was structured along the Sego Canyon, with homes, a company store, and a school scattered through the narrow landscape. The town's buildings were built to support the coal mine higher up the canyon, which was the heart of the community. The mine had its own rail tracks and tipple, while a boarding house housed unmarried workers. Everything in Sego was centered around the coal industry, making the town's survival tied directly to the mine's success. It's just a lot of rubble now, but like, you know, this used to be people's livelihoods and their life. And maybe Sego isn't really historically known or that much of historical importance. But you have to consider that there's ghost towns like this throughout all the United States, very similar stories of times past and tangible way to see history without 
limits, really. So this is the main area of Sego, and I'll see if I can find a picture of what it used to originally look like. It's pretty big. And I'll show you the big structure over there. And this is an old car from the 50s, probably. Of course, it's destroyed with graffiti like everything else in America. So this is where we're going to camp tonight, right actually in the center of town. It's crazy to find this just out in a canyon, you know? But look how big this is. So I'm in probably the biggest building in town. <laughs> Just to give you a little size comparison of the size of this building, it's just a very big building. I'm assuming there's multiple floors. So there's windows up there. Now that I have finally achieved my dreams of there being absolutely nobody around, it's actually really hard to do, harder than you would think. To find a place where there's absolutely nobody else around where you can sleep and camp. I think there's always people everywhere, so this is really nice. Keeping on theme of the Wild West, and also because we only have canned food left, we didn't actually bring any food, much food with us. We have eggs, one sweet potato, and some canned food. I'm gonna try to cook some beans like they did back in the day, in a can on the fire. That's gonna be today's supper. <laughs> It's so cold. There's no breeze but the trees talking. It's pretty creepy out here, isn't it? sometimes. It's probably the ancients, the ones that wrote the pictures on the stone. They come out at nighttime and dance around. And then the people of Sego, the ghost town, still haunt the area. Anyways, it's time for bed. It's really cold out here. Oh! So I hope you enjoyed the little tour around the ghost town. We're going to sleep here tonight. It got really cold all of a sudden and windy last night. I did not sleep well. It's, it was warmer last night than it's been. It was just kind of eerie feeling in a weird way. And you guys know I don't get scared of anything. The person I'm traveling with and I, we both woke up at, at different times in the middle of the night and it's like, we're concerned about something being on the ceiling. He said that he saw like worms or caterpillars on the ceiling. And I would like swore I saw him like have his hand up on the ceiling like this for an extended period of time. And I'm like, wait, is your hand on the ceiling? And he's like, no. But I think we just both woke up randomly <laughs> and like said that. It was very strange. You make up things in your head. So we're going to continue on our trip. I want to take a pit stop in Salt Lake City. Let, let's get out of this ghost town first though and um, try to beat the, the wind that's coming. Once again at Hot Springs in uh, Provo. I feel like hot springs are best enjoyed when it is cold out. All right, I'm gonna end my vlog here. This is the, I can't believe we actually got the hot springs to ourselves. The watercolor is insane. It's like neon green and blue and beautiful. Um, thank you so much for joining me on this 
Ghost Town Adventure, Stay Extraterrestrial, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.